Richard Quest has completed an aviation first. I know what you're thinking. What, again? Yes, again, he did it again. And it's a dream come true, of course, for our geek in residence, Richard Quest. There he goes. You're going to see him now marching down the air bridge before setting off for the longest commercial flight in the world from Singapore to New York. I point out he couldn't find his boarding pass at this point in time, but take a look at the rest of the journey. planning, lots of care and dedication, a brand new aircraft, and a record to be broken. The longest flight in the world. Here we go. Wheels up. 16 hours left of flying. Nothing really much to do keep an eye on things, climb as high as we can, communicate with air traffic control, nothing exciting, which is how I like it. So this is the selection of food that is served immediately after takeoff. I've chosen to have all three of the main options. What's this? Oh, this is, uh, we call it guayu. So this is for us to um, dis um, dispose all <laughs> okay, so we've got 11 and a half hours still to go. Most of the plane is asleep. I can't sleep yet. I want to save my sleep to the last six or seven hours of the flight so I'm fresh and relaxed in the early morning. So that means time for movies. And on this flight, there are Most of the passengers, after the first meal, they will sleep about six, six hours and then they wake up, they're looking for food to eat. We're now two hours out of Newark Airport. Time to get dressed once again. I always get dressed for about this time before landing on a long flight. Well, the bathrooms get rather nasty. A350 has 161 passengers on board. There's no economy class here, but there is premium economy. And morning, good flight. Morning, morning. What do you think of it? It's great. Longest flight in the world. You, you enjoy it? Yes. Good. And so we have arrived, 17 hours and 25 minutes, a quicker crossing because of the excellent tailwinds. This flight, along with the other ultra-long hauls, usher in an entirely new era of travel. Longer distances, any two places on the globe can now pretty much be joined up. The world really is now our oyster. Okay. Joins me now. As you can see, he still has those anti jet lag glasses. Is that what they're called? Yes, it's a company called AO, and they make these glasses which gives blue light that you wear for 30 minutes at a time uh, for several and, days and when after. Are, when are we going to know if they work? It's really several days afterwards that you know, because okay. um, the, the goal here is to re. Is, I get light when I shouldn't, therefore, it rebalances my and, circadian rhythm. And as you can see there, you, you wore them during yeah, this longest flight. Of course, I had great fun with this yesterday because I thought you resembled very much, you know, a minion in these glasses at this point. <laughs> Come on! Ding, ding. There's a there's a there's a lady who's annoying me. <laughs> Stewardess, ding, no, ding, I'm not ding, leaving. Thank the, you. Or the cabin. I'm not leaving the cabin. In all seriousness, what possessed you to want this flight? I mean, do you really think people want to be on an airplane this long? You had a very nice, comfortable cabin. I know that. Yeah, I do because the direct flight 
is usually preferable to a one-stop, and people do want to have that. And these new aircrafts, the 350 and the 787, allow you to have these long-haul flights at cheaper costs, opening up what they call these long, thin routes, Chicago to Houston, uh, for, for example. Interesting. Okay, now, Richard, as we said, you are a veteran. Sorry, did I say you, Chicago? You, you, you how tired I am. I should, Not Chicago I'm... to Houston. That's, that's a, it's, a, it's a major route. I meant Chicago to Auckland. Excellent. Auckland. I'd love to go there. Okay, next. This is not the first time you've done something like this. We want to take a little look back into your greatest aviation hits. <laughs> Qantas kangaroo route from Perth to London in 17 hours. Your hopping days are over. Perth to London, non-stop. That is extraordinary. From Auckland to Doha on Qatar Airways. Just over 9,000 miles on 17 hours, 30 minutes. Using the Boeing 777-200LR. Long range. I'm about at that stage where I'm ready to pass out. Yeah, it was fantastic, yeah. Um, yeah, to be part of uh, a special inaugural flight like this. Hey, history! <laughs> and with Boeing Hong Kong to London, the long way round on another 777-200LR. Just to prove it can be done. Celebrating 22 hours 40 minutes in the air. We feel like this is a flight of a career. We won't have another opportunity like this. That truly is the longest flight in the world. <laughs> it's fair to say I've had my fair share of longest flights in the world. I know by now to pack the essentials. Compression socks. Very snug on the legs. Not to forget to stretch and to resist the urge to whine. Are we there yet? And when all is said and done, you might be a little worse for wear after that ultra-long haul. But without that layover, you can go to far-flung places with far less fuss. You always say that the glamour has been taken out of flying. I mean, I suppose to a certain extent that's true, but when you're going on a long flight, 17, 18, 19 hours, how, how do you readjust to getting ready for a flight like that? The important thing to re remember is that the body is going to deteriorate after 10 hours in the air. Uh -huh. And what Qantas and, to a certain extent, Singapore Airlines have done is re-engineer the flight, make sure that the lighting is... Um, is it, controlled so it creates the correct light temperature for morning, sunrise or sunset. Okay. They can control it so that the cabin has different shades. The food that's on offer, yeah, if you want a big, heavy, stodgy steak, they'll give it you, but they'll also offer a variety of other options. Things like exercises before you actually get on. So, for example, ensuring before you fly that you maybe do a few... Before you fly. Do I have before to you on fly. the flight too? Just do some stretching. Go to now, the back of the aircraft and just do a few of now, these. Tell me the truth, Richard. I've never asked you, when you're on these really, really long flights and you're all over the world all the time, what really is the trick to getting over jet lag? There is none. <laughs> I love that answer, there Richard. There, no, seriously, there is no <laughs> trick to it. Jet lag is a natural phenomenon that will affect most of us. There are a few who doesn't. Good luck to them. The real trick, I find, is one of two things. One, get sunlight. Go sunlight. outside, okay. vitamin D, as much of it as you can. If it's okay. hot and sunny, go outside. You sleep when you're tired. And nap. Don't be afraid to say, I'm tired. I'm just going to my hotel room to have a 20-minute nap. Become a napaholic. Okay, uh, back to that. You can take your show back, by the way. Go, I'm going to nap. Very much. You need these. All right, well, oh. as we continue, another veteran of flight uh, SQ-22, Jeffrey Thomas from Airlines Ratings, joins me. The battle for the longest flight. Jeffrey, shame on you. We were on the plane together. Look at me and look at you. Have a, you, you deserve the C-suite for this. Thank you.